Hello everyone, this is Audrey Perkins from the Indiana Daily Student, and this week I'm going to show you guys how to make a blackberry clafouti. Um, that is a traditional French custard that's baked with fruit in it, and it's a very simple recipe today. Also, I'm simplifying it even more by making it in a jar. But for the first step, we're going to take a buttered baking dish and fill it with fruit. Um, I have about a cup to two cups blackberry. This is a very rough amount. Basically, you want to make enough just to fill an even flat layer of berries on the bottom of the pan. And once you do that, you could set that pan aside. So this recipe is a bit special because instead of mixing it in a bowl, um, like I've done in other recipes with cake, we're going to shake it in a jar. I kind of thought of using kind of a shaking pancake type recipe and idea for this. So we're going to start off by mixing the eggs, the vanilla, the honey, and the milk, basically all the liquids. And we're going to mix that up well, and then we're going to add in that flour last. And just a quick note, um, this recipe will have lumps, so you're going to have to strain the recipe into the baking dish when you are ready to bake. Um, if you want to avoid a lot of lumps, it would be best to do the eggs, the vanilla, the honey, and the flour first, just so the liquid isn't too thin. And this will help reduce the amount of lumps because it'll be more of a manageable um, consistency, and that will help you stir better. And then you'd add in your milk. But in this case, in this video, I had a strainer on hand, so I dumped all the liquids together so I can make sure everything was well mixed in that sense. So you're going to add in about a third a cup of honey, that's what I'm doing right now. You could use any other sweetener you prefer, but I wanted to have that mild floral flavor that comes with honey, so I mix that in with the vanilla and egg. And just going to give that a stir. And then another quick tip, um, when you see me add in that flour, it will get a little bit messy. I didn't realize how narrow that jar mouth would be. So if you want to avoid the future mess that I'm about to make, um, it would be easy if you just take a sheet of notebook paper, printer paper, whatever paper that's not going to tear, essentially. Pour all that flour in it, and then hold it so that the ends are together and you have a very narrow opening, and then just use, it, just use that to pour the flour into the jar, and that will prevent any mess, which you're about to see me make. But add all that flour in, and you're going to want to clean up the mouth of the jar so that there's not any excess flour on it. And then you're going to want to give it a preliminary stir just so that you could prevent any really large lumps from forming, because if you just kind of shake the flour in one go, um, it may just clump together. So try to give it a first stir just so that you can get things going. And just you could use any spoon, fork, anything narrow enough not to get stuck in the mouth of the jar. And when you're done with that, put your lid on the jar. And you're going to want to shake this for three to five minutes, really until the lumps are gone and the, like, the majority of the liquid is homogenous. You want it to be creamy, a little thin. It shouldn't look like cake batter. This is a very, like, very milky recipe because this is going to be a baked custard and just keep shaking until you think that it's ready. If there's a few lumps, that's fine, because um, you're going to strain this. Um, that will make sure that the texture is very creamy and smooth. And if you don't have a strainer, and you're about to see me pour it through a strainer to get into the batter, you could, of course, you could of course just dump it, but um, if you want to be a perfectionist and have a good photo, you could do what I did. But like I was saying earlier, if you don't have a strainer, you could use a slotted um, spoon like one of those straining spoons that you would cook with, or you could even just use a fork and pour really slowly through the fork. Um, but when you're done with that, take it away and bake it in an oven at 350 for about 45 minutes to an hour. Basically, you want the edges to be fluffy and the middle to be dense and still look shiny, but it shouldn't jiggle when you um, shake it. But that's it for the week. Enjoy, you guys.